Before I get involved in telling you how we got it uh, started with Formulate 2 and the NRC rash, and I just want to explain to you a little bit who we are. Uh, Big Gains, a company that started in 1973 by Elton Klustemeyer on the, my left and Mark Hinton on the right. They started basically with zero tons and a broken down old feed mill, decided to go on their own. Both of them right now are retired and the company is run, operated by Kirk Klustemeyer and Tim Hinton. We um, started in that broken down mill, like I said, and in 1981, we built the first phase of a new mill operation, tripled our capacity, um, and we're quite proud of that since we were the first computerized mill built in the state of Minnesota. Uh, by 2000, we could no longer manufacture all the feed that uh, we needed to since we had moved into southwest uh, Wisconsin. So we purchased the mill there, and I'll show that to you in a second. But by 2006, we needed to expand again. So the twin sister of this mill was built at that time. So this is our main um, manufacturing plant in addition to our main office, as we would call it. This is our plant in Lodi, Wisconsin. It's located about 20 miles north of uh, Madison right on Interstate 90. So if you drive by there, you'll see this plant. You can't miss it. As we uh, move forward, I just want to talk to you a little bit about our company, a little bit about our customer background. Uh, we work with herds up to about 1,200 cows, but the majority of our herds are in that 75 to 300 cow range. Um, most of these farms are uh, uh, have maybe a thousand acres of land, give or take a little bit, they raise their own crops, most of which, or almost all of which, is uh, fed to the dairy herd, including replacement um, heifers. Family provides most of the labor, um, although when they get up to that 300 cow range, some of those guys are going to um, hire some milkers, most likely. Um, we've been using modeling since 1998 with decent success, but I was thinking we could do much better than that. So I just want to share with you a little bit of what I was looking for. Uh, one of my customers came to me a number of, a couple of years ago and he said, you know, Wayne, I pay freight to have my milk hauled from my farm to a milk plant. That's based on volume. And if I can ship more protein or butter fat, than water. That's more profitable to me. That made a lot of sense and we would oftentimes get somewhere around upper twos, maybe three percent milk protein and he challenged me to get better than that. And I couldn't do that. So that was one of the reasons I really took a look at could we find modeling that would help us more uh, on the components, especially milk protein. I wanted the ability to optimize or least cost a diet. And I had always worked with optimization, so I, I wanted that again, not just um, an evaluation system. One of the earlier models that we used had amino acid gram requirements, so I wanted that again, not just ratios and percentages of MP and those type of things. I wanted to have the requirements for those amino acids in, in terms of grams. And I wanted performance prediction accuracy. So when we formulated a diet, we could get in and predict what we would expect on that farm with confidence so our guys could go out in the field and have confidence that what they put together, that's what the cows were gonna do. And I also wanted a program that was pretty easy to use. So I've been looking around a little bit and it led me to the NRC model and what I call formulate two core components. And you'll hear about a little bit more about that a little later. So in October of 2012, I met with Dr. Chuck Schwab. Explained to him what I was looking for. And Chuck, being he was on the NRC committee in 2001, obviously was a little more biased to the NRC model, which I kind of expected. But he was gracious enough to spend some time with me, kind of explain how that model worked. And then I expressed to him my concern that it was an evaluation system, not a optimizer. 
And that's when he said to me, he said, obviously, I haven't heard of Formula 2 and Gary Foster. So he put me in touch with, with Gary of Central Valley Nutrition Associates in California. And what I found that Gary had is that he was using the NRC 2001 as an operating platform. That was exciting to me. He incorporated the post-2001 NRC work, which in my opinion just really helped predict milk, milk protein and those type of things more accurately. Gary did help me sort through some of the marketing and performance. And what I mean by that, there's lots of other products out there. Gary's had some experience with those. So that helped me build a little confidence in which one of those products or products we should be using. And then he was willing to spend some time helping me train our dairy specialist. So what I did is I found out that his optimized solution, balancing for RDP, MP lysine, MP methionine, all while least costing, he had just what I was looking for. So we took it forward to uh, the next step. It takes a little time to implement a new program to a group of dairy specialists. So I purchased the first uh, software in March of 2013, met with Gary. We did a lot of on, online meetings, he taught me how to use the program, uh, all those type of things. So I got comfortable with what was going to happen. Um, by that fall of uh, October of 2013, I put my first herd on it. Coming around to uh, 2014, we purchased 17 um, of Formula 2 software. In May, July, September of 2014, we trained 17 more people, all in small groups. When I say we trained, that was the help with um, Gary. I did a lot of some of this uh, right in my office to begin with. And then in September, I believe it was Gary, you and Dr. Schwab came out and we had a larger group training, uh, about two and a half, three day type training. It was very great because Dr. Schwab was able to help us understand amino acid balancing better. Gary was able to help us understand the modeling part and the formulate too. Since we had contracts with other, another company, I needed to get all of our customers transferred to this model by December 1st of 2014 because our contract to the old company was gonna expire and uh, so a lot of the guys were under the gun, but we managed to get that done. So for about the last uh, almost six months, all of our customers are on NRC Formulate 2. What we encouraged our people to do was, as a first step, is take Formulate 2 and insert the current diet that was on the farm and just evaluate those nutrients compared to performance that was happening on the farm. Gave us a good base starting point. And then we formulated in baby steps. And what I mean by that is we might have found some shortcomings on uh, methionine as an example. Well, instead of trying to get methionine in ratio with lysine or the amounts fed, it could have cost a lot of money. So we encourage the guys to get your RDP in line, maybe bring methionine up a little bit, watch your cost, watch the performance on the farm, and then step it up. So a lot of our, our dairy specialists uh, did that. I'm gonna show you the results of three farms here uh, in terms of energy corrected milk. Um, you can read through all of that was happening. So this is a starting point for each one of these farms. And as you can see here, we started at 73 pounds of energy corrected milk in April of 2014. And a year later, we were at 88 pounds. So we've done quite well on this particular farm. Farm B, this is actually the very first farm we put on uh, Formulate 2. Um, I happen to work with this farm myself. This has been a family farm that has been one of our customers for 40 years. As long as Big Game's been around, this family's been with us. This is the guy that actually told me he wanted to ship more milk components than out water. So it's actually worked out quite well. We can see we got up into greater than 100 pounds of uh, energy corrected milk. Visiting with him last week, he was at uh, actually pushing this 101 again energy corrected. Components very good, milk tank doing quite well. One thing I want to add, all three of these farms, none of them are using Pozolac. This is the only one that milks three times a day. 
So for whatever that's worth. An interesting thing in farm B also is look at the change. Remember, here's where he started amino acid balancing. Look at the change here on pregnancy rate. I have no statistics or data or anything to back this up, but there's something going on. I can explain this to you where he got as low as he did. That was two weeks in Maui, and I think that's all right also. But somewhere around here, about a year after he'd been on that program, we're doing better on reproductive performance. So is that a result of better job of amino acid balancing? I don't know that for sure, but I understand it could certainly be a contributing factor. Farm C, uh, this is a brand new customer. Quite honestly, what happened here is, is our current ration balancing software with Formulate 2 has helped us get this guy. There's no doubt about it. And when we start seeing ECMs of greater than 100 pounds, it's going to be awful tough for someone to take this customer away from us. So um, all in all, we've had some, some pretty good success. I do want to explain to you what we had to go through to move from one model to another model. So I call 2014 a blur. Generally, and most of you would agree, that people don't like change. I'm not a lot different. But I knew I was going to have some challenges when I went to a team of 15 to 17 men and women saying, we're going to change models. Well, that happened, so I was a little prepared. Training on a new model while maintaining business, that's key, requires a lot of patience, persistence, and a lot of extra work. And some of these guys didn't want that. But we managed to hold them all together. We did it in small groups, and I think it worked out okay. As I mentioned earlier, I encouraged every one of them, once they got a chance to and, and understand how to navigate through um, the FRB, NRC process, um, we had them insert the current diet on the farm. And that was a diet they were actually feeding. So actually it's the same feed, maybe looking at different numbers in the model uh, and just trying to get to understand uh, where some of these numbers are generated from in terms of uh, RDP, grams, all those type of things. So they got a good feel of it and they didn't have to worry so much about a ration not performing. 2014 we had uh, uh, the luxury of having the highest milk price ever. So we had an option when we went into using this model. We could have reduced costs in some cases, but because of that milk price, because of the confidence we saw, in most cases we actually raised milk or excuse me, feed costs by 20 to 60 cents a cow a day. The majority of that obviously would have been in terms of feed costs. So where did that come from? Um, many cases we reduced RDP some, which saved us some money, but then to get the amount, the grams of lysine and methionine where we felt it needed to be, we did incorporate some protected amino acids. But again, because of that milk price, our producers were willing to take uh, that risk. So where were the economics in all this? I just looked at this uh, using a federal milk marketing orders from a May of this year. And on uh, that day I looked, butterfat was $1.89 a pound, milk protein was $2.55. For a 20 cent investment, if we got two pounds of milk, a tenth of a percent of butter fat and 0.05% increase in milk protein, that would re increase your income over feed cost by 37 cents for an ROI of $2.87. Even in today's market, people are willing to take that investment. And can we get two pounds? One of our uh, dairy specialists just the other day sent me a spreadsheet of 10 herds he had just evaluated that he had had the beginning uh, production data on and ending. He used the current milk prices on all of those. In those 10 farms, it was roughly 1,200 cows, he increased milk yield by five pounds. He increased revenue on each one of those cows by a dollar three cents a day. I asked him what he spent and it was in this 20 to 40 cents. So if he spent 40, he still got 63 back in today's market. So these guys really willing to do it even in today's milk market. If you took the same information and compared it to October of 2014, 
you see that milk fat was about a buck a pound higher and milk protein was about $1.18 a pound higher. That same investment of 20 cents would have returned 64. So we really had some opportunity last fall. We took advantage of it. Instead of trying to save money, we tried to drive milk and milk components. Just some closing comments. Um, we've been into it a little, I have personally, almost two years now. But um, as a group, we've been in, into it a, almost a year. Uh, we're very pleased with the results. Um, really, I can't say anything bad about it. Our dairy specialists as a group have more confidence, and that's really important to me, that our guys can get up every morning, go to work, pull onto those farms and say, hey, things are going to go well today. And, and that's, that's been really important to me. This is an interesting thing. Customers want to take the next step. We have uh, one customer in southwest Minnesota, about 900 cows, milking 90 pounds of milk. He came to our dairy specialist a couple of weeks ago and said, figure out another ration for me. Let's increase the density of amino acids, and let's see if we can get that. That's in a low milk price. So these guys, the, our customers, know uh, the potential out there. What do we want to do? We want to explore amino acid uh, balancing opportunities with dry and transition cows. I think there's some opportunity here because um, those early lactating cows really are using some lean tissue to provide the amino acids required. So, so do we have an opportunity here? And we're, we're going to take a closer look at that. And with that, I believe, must have been my last slide, so thank you. Any questions? <laughs>